Hey guys, this is the Balkan Architect and this will be a series of tutorials in which I'll show you how to model the famous Le Corbusier's Villa Savoie in Revit from start to finish. So a lot of you have been asking me to do this type of a longer tutorial where I model the whole, whole house from the beginning to basically the end and I'll try to keep it at around 10 minutes so every tutorial will be around 10 minutes and we'll see how many parts we get. And for all the links that are necessary to model this house, I'll leave them in the description of this video so you can use that if you want to follow along and model it yourself. And before I get started, I would just like to ask you to like this video, it helps me out a lot. And if you haven't already, I suggest you subscribe because I make videos like these pretty much every day. And of course I chose this project because it's one of my favorite Re Le Corbusier's buildings and it demonstrates his five points of architecture perfectly so I thought it would be the best building for this type of a project. So before we get started I have some images over here on desktop that I saved in order to model this building so I'm just going to open it up and links for these images are in the description. So here we have this is just a roof level, roof garden, this is a top or floor level, this is a ground level and here we have basically just the basement or underground. And I have just one elevation that will help us determine all the necessary levels and the heights. Okay, so I'm just going to close this up and open up Revit and I'm going to be using this architectural template for this project. And let's open it up and before we do anything, I always like to set the units up first, so just type in UN and set the units to whatever you prefer using, I prefer using meters, ok, ok, and if you don't know how to set all the units, I have a link to the tutorial on units in the description of this video as well. Ok, so let's just start modeling and first thing we need to do is we need to load in our ground level just in order to get the scale of this project so I'm going to go here to insert tab go image desktop and here I have ground level open it up and just place it like so okay once you've done this now we're just going to place some grids and then we'll scale this image basically to the grids and if I zoom in you can see this is 475 this is in meters so I have some dimensions that I'm going to be using in order to scale this into proportion. So I'll just go here to architecture tab and you have this grid over here or you can use the shortcut GR to start the command. So I'll just place one grid on screen over here like so. This will be grid 1 and then I'm just going to select it and I can just type in CS for create similar and here I'm going to use this pick lines tool to create other grids and for the offset I'll go for 475 because that's what we have over here so I'm going to choose that and I'm just going to place these grids I have five of them so just place them like so okay once we've done that we can just move this a bit down and now we need to scale this so to scale either go here to scale or just type in RE for the shortcut you zoom in over here you place basically select this column over here and then I can select basically the end column which is over here select that and you just stretch it basically to this outside grid so now this is kinda in place as you can see it these grids are aligned with our columns maybe we can move the picture like this yeah that's it it's scaled into proportion and now we need to add all the horizontal grids and to do that I'll just type in GR for grid and here I'll just place the first one so I'll place this one as and as you can see this is now named grid number six but we need these to be one through five and these I want to be ABC so in order to change that I'll, let's just move this into place so to change that you just select your grid and here for the name in your properties panel you just select this and you type in A and go apply so this is now named A and now when you start drawing all other grids so let's just go create similar use the same pick lines tool and the same offset of 475 and when you start picking these lines you can see now it switched to ABC so you just need to select that 
for the first time and then it will go again naturally for all others it will just pick up this ABC pattern okay so once we have these grids let's just extend them a bit to encompass the whole house so once we have these grids in place let's add the heights of the levels so to do that I'm going to go here to east elevation and the reason I chose east elevation is because I have east elevation image saved on my desktop so I'm going to go here to insert open up the insert tab go to image and then I'm just going to find my east elevation here it is open it up and just place it over here now you can see it's way bigger than it needs to be so we just need to place it so the column is actually in the middle of this or the grid line is in the middle of the column and once you've done that you go again RE for scale select here select the center of this end column over here so make sure you don't go all the way to the end of the house you need to go to the end of the column because grids are at columns and then you just move it to the end grid which is grid E in this instance and you can see now the grids are in place we can just select them and move them a bit up and a bit down to encompass the whole house and now we can change these levels but first let's move this image a bit up to be at level 1 and let's rename level 1 to maybe floor or ground level so you just select the level and you go here to properties and you have here name and let's just type in ground level and go OK and once you've done that you just type in here yes then let's select the second one and let's just move it a bit down now I'm just going to move it like this that's at 3.2 meters you don't want to move it actually all the way down to this line because then the floor will go underneath this basically level so you need to move it up a bit so I just I'll just keep it at 3.2 and then I'm going to select and create a new level so I'm just going to while this level is selected just go create similar and go use pick lines and let's offset that by 3.2 so I'm just going to offset it twice over here and this one I'll offset down once so this one I'll keep it at basically 6.4 meters because I would like to have the same uh, same floor heights so I can have the staircase that's the same height we can just change this top one because the stairs doesn't really go up to level 4 so let's just change that to 3 meters okay and for this ground one let's just keep that at 3.2 as well so I'm just going to select this one type in underground yes let's just name this floor level let's name this I don't know terrace and let's name this top okay so once that's completed you can go here to ground level and now we can go maybe to I don't know floor level and let's add the image for floor level and do the same thing for all other levels now I'm going to speed that up because basically the process is the same so you don't have to watch everything all over again. okay once we've added all the images and all the grids now we can start modeling the geometry so let's first do these columns over here so I'm just going to go here to the structure tab and here we have the structural column or we can use the CL shortcut to start this command 
and we only have this column over here now this is some steel column and we don't really want to use it so I'm just going to go here to load family and here I am to in US Imperial library but I'm going to be using the metric one so I'll just scroll down find structural columns and I'm going to find concrete ones and here we have this rectangular one round one let's do the square and the round so I'm just going to load both of these in and go open and now I'm just going to be using the round column first and let's use this this 300 millimeter so I'm going to show you two types of ways you can basically place columns in Revit so here I can just go in and just place it like this now you can see we have this warning so I'm just going to step back for a moment that's why that's because here we have this set to depth but we need to set it to height because our column is basically going up it's not going down and for the elevation to to which our column will be going we need to set that to roof level so most of these columns will be going to roof level so I'm just going to choose roof level and let's start placing these columns so you just place them like this in the intersections of these grid lines or also you can use this so you can go here to add grids select that and now you just select let's say these grids and these grids as well and you go finish and it had already created columns on those grids now it created a column here even though we don't want it there so I'm just going to delete that one and I'm just going to select this one and go create similar and I'm going to be using the same method of just placing it here at grid lines over here let's place this one over here and now we, you can see we have these columns that are actually not on the grid lines so I'm just going to place one here now this is a square column so I'm not going to place that one and as you can see this line over here this dotted line that appears that means that it's in line with this column that's what we want so I'm just going to place one here and that's it for round columns now we can switch to basically these square columns and let's just place it in the same line over here and over here and let's place them over here as well where we have them so there we have this square column now I'm going to select that column and all of these and I'm just going to mirror them to the other side so just type in MM for mirror with pick axis and I'm going to pick this axis and now you can see we have mirrored these columns okay so I guess this is a good part good place to pause and that's it for this part one of this tutorial now I will be continuing with a next tutorial tomorrow so make sure you subscribe for that Okay, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. Please like this video and share it if you haven't already. Leave a comment in the comment section below if you have any questions, comments or suggestions for future tutorials. Thank you for watching and see you tomorrow.